Hey everyone, it's Andy here, and in this video, I'm going to be painting some striking scorpions to my tabletop level. Now let's paint. Now, if you've watched the channel before or been on my Instagram or anything like that, you will hopefully know I am the biggest Eldar fan. I've got uh, an army that I love and yeah, they're just my favorite faction 40k. So was I excited when they unveiled the striking scorpions? Well, not really. I thought, yeah, they're okay. But I did really change my mind when it came to painting them. I still think the posing could be a little more interesting, but yeah, they're actually really cool and I'm super stoked to have painted them. I think the key is obviously getting the right tone of green and I think that I found the exact one I had in my head so I'm really pleased with that. So let's just get into it and get the paint on. These days I'm pretty much doing every paint job with a, a light base coat and if you don't have an airbrush then I would recommend starting with Wraithbone primer, just a pale primer and I think you'll get more vibrant greens easily. I'm using the airbrush, I'm actually testing out the new Harder and Steenbeck Evolution and uh, that will be Cult of Paintified in uh, not too long. But I'm just doing a pre-highlight here, so I'm spraying some Tamiya Flat White over the black and I don't need to be super accurate with this, you know, just as long as it's a pale base coat, that's going to be fine. But if you can, try and do some highlights where you think they're going to go. Really, this is just to help the green be nice and vibrant and not have too many coats of paint going over it. So if you are going by brush, then I would just do yeah a pale primer like Wraithbone, which is excellent. And then you can just brush paint the paint over the top. And uh, yeah, I really, really do paint pretty much everything with a, a light base coat. It's normally this process, though, spraying it black, then spraying it white. And then, you know, when there's stuff that... Uh, you know you want to be really, really dark in the shadows. At least you've got a little bit of a head start. The two colours I went for, flat green from Model Color and lime green from AK. And these are fantastic paints to use with the brush. Not amazing through the airbrush, but because I'm only doing five models, I thought that's fine. If I was doing a whole army, then maybe I would use some more airbrush friendly paints. Really, to get them through the airbrush, you just need to thin them, maybe a little more than normal, and that just means you might need to do a couple extra coats or something like that. Here I've got it nice and thin, and it's going through the airbrush nicely, and as you can see, I really think this is a, a wonderful green. Uh, but yeah, they cover a lot better. The Games Workshop greens, such as Moot Green and uh, Warpstone Glow, I don't really like those paints. They don't have good coverage. And yeah, I don't love the finish, whereas these I really, really like. So I think it's worth getting these if you really want some nice greens. After building that up, you can see why it was worthwhile going with the light base coat. I think we've got a nice head start. And to be honest, you could just start edge highlighting this and it would look fantastic. But I want to do some highlights. So I mix some lime green in with the flat green. And there's no exact mix, I just had some flat green left over in the cup, so I just put a little bit of lime green in there. You could just go straight to lime green, but I think why not use the paint left in the cup and just build it up a little more slowly. Now this, I'm going to focus on highlighting the upper areas, such as the helmet, the shoulders, the chest. And I'll try and catch little bits on the legs, but really I want to draw the eye to the top of the model. And I'm just trying to hold the model in a comfortable angle so I can just hit those highlight parts. Next, I quickly cleaned the cup out and ran some pure lime green. And this time I try and do the highlights as small as I can, but don't worry about it too much. It's really difficult to get the highlights, you know, the exact size. And what we're going to do is blend them in with the darker color so we can make those highlights a little smaller in the next step. But I still try and do them as accurately as I can. And you really do have to, to take your time with this, but you're saving a lot of time using the airbrush anyway. So just take your time, try and add some highlights to the focal areas. And uh, you can see this is a awesome, vibrant color and uh, it's definitely gonna stand out on the tabletop. Because I paint and film under such bright lights, I end up being a bit too reserved sometimes for my tabletop minis and they're a little too subtle. So 
trying to get a nice vibrant green here so they look great on the table. One of the most important steps now, and I do this on pretty much everything, is I build up the color to the lightest and I'm gonna go back now with the flat green. This time I'm gonna dilute it even more and that means I'm gonna spray from below and just try and blend the colors in. You can see I've kind of got too much lime green over the model and this just gives me the opportunity to one, blend the colors together, but also make those highlights a little bit smaller. We want most of the model to be the flat green and lime green really just to pick out the uh, yeah the focal areas like the face and the chest and stuff like that. Again, if you're doing this by hand without the airbrush, then maybe you just go for the flat green all over and just start building up the highlights with lime green. You can make it look just as good without an airbrush. It's just a tiny bit more time consuming. And for me, I like the airbrush because I really want to get my army stuff on the table fast. And you can see we can get a massive impact in pretty much no time. That's all the airbrushing done. And now, to be honest, you've got to do the worst part, which is paint all of the bits black. Yeah, it's just the worst. I actually uh, did just one a day because I was working on another project at the same time. So I just kind of blocked out one black and then came back to it the next day because uh, yeah, it took ages. I spend most of my time working on videos for Patreon, whereas Henry is doing the videos for YouTube. But when Striking Scorpions were coming out, I knew I had to do a video for this. So I kind of squeezed it in working on those Patreon videos. So yeah, if you want to see more tutorials from me, they're normally a lot longer, maybe two or even three hours on one model. Then yeah, please check out our Patreon. It means a lot to Henry and I and uh, it helps massively. But yeah, while I was working on those Patreon videos, I would spend half hour blocking in the black on a scorpion and then maybe I'd do a bit of metallics later so I just kind of chipped away at them uh, a little tiny bit day by day and actually it was super nice to do some relaxed painting as well. Anyway let's get back to finishing the scorpions. My favorite reference image for striking scorpions I think is actually this one. I think most people look at the classics but I really like this kind of modern take from this book and I'm going to take a lot of cues from this. Instead of having the yellow kind of lines running through them, I think I want to do them this kind of bronze color and also instead of it being all green, I really want to paint the kind of undersuit black, even if it isn't an undersuit. I just kind of want big areas of black and that will make the green look better by comparison. So yeah, this is one of the main things I want to reference. I also really like how the claw has this bronze trim, so I think I'll copy that for the X arc as well. With all the black done, you can see what a difference it makes, and I really like having those black legs. It's pretty tricky to go in between the plates, so if you make a mistake, you know, don't worry about it. The paints I used have such good coverage, it's kind of easier to fix mistakes. What I'm going to do now is work on the metallics, which is probably the second biggest job really after painting the black and I'm going to base coat it with you guessed it decayed metal the cult of paint favorite so just base coat all of the metallic parts in decayed metal and I wanted to paint quite a lot actually uh, have a lot of bronze sections on here I painted the edges of the claw with that decayed metal here at this point as well and yeah, I think this was a good choice. It kind of makes it stand out. I was thinking about doing a black claw or all uh, bronze, but I think painting this little trim is a fun little detail. I highlighted this with Rune Lord Brass uh, from Citadel. It's actually a new paint for me and I really like it. It's the right tone I wanted for these scorpions. I didn't want it to be too gold and yellow as I think it would kind of take away from the green. You could do a mix with decayed metal if you want it to look more blended. For me, I want to do a nice looking job but keep the stages down. So I just went straight in and highlighted with that Rune Lord brass. Then I started working on the gems and I base coated them all with corn red. I highlighted the bottom halves with Mephiston red. And then in the reference image, I kind of liked how there was a, a pinky light on the top and it wasn't the usual just white dot. So I just got Mephiston red with a little bit of white and built up a kind of pink highlight 
on the top parts of the gems and the lenses. And yeah, I really like this look. There aren't a lot of silver parts, mainly just the teeth of the chainsaw. So just use whatever silver you like. And I did a wash with normal black paint, just thinned down, which is my preference over known oil. I started on the black and I wanted to keep it really simple. And I just did one edge highlight with dark blue gray. And you can adjust this guide obviously to the, the level you want to paint to. So if you want to paint it to a higher level, then add in a lighter gray and build up those highlights. I can always come back to these and add additional highlights. But for now, I just want to get to a good tabletop level, nice and neat, but not too many stages. And yeah, I feel like I can add any additional highlights whenever I like, but just one sharp highlight I think is better than uh, lots of not super neat ones. On the legs, it's kind of a larger area, so you might need to do a mix with black and build that up, but it's fairly easy to just get a highlight that matches your green across the thighs here. Even though I didn't do the yellow details on the shoulder pads, I still wanted some yellow stripes on the chainsaw. I used Sahara yellow from AK and I noticed I don't really own many yellows. So maybe uh, flash gits would be a bit nicer, a bit more vibrant, but just try and do it nice and quick and then neaten them up if you don't do a perfect job. Maybe unusually, you might have noticed I didn't do any brushwork on the green, but I actually like to leave this until the end because you don't know how much work to do on the green or how much effort until you've got the other details on. But also I made a ton of mistakes getting blobs of black on stuff and whatever. So at this point I can go in and neaten anything up and I can also add some highlights. Here I'm adding some extra highlights on the shoulders with lime green and you can do edge highlights too if you want. I focused on the upper areas like the, the chest and the head. But yeah, this just kind of depends on what kind of painter you are and what you want to do with these models. You don't have to do any edge highlights and they'll look fantastic because, you know, the green is so good. But you might want to edge highlight everything depending on, you know, what you're doing. So just adjust that. For me, I'm just focusing, yeah, on the upper areas. I do think it's worth doing. You can see on the kind of the ab armor, just a little edge highlight on the upper part where the light would catch really does make a difference. And yeah, maybe at a glance at tabletop, this doesn't do a huge difference, but it's kind of nice when you pick the individual models up for them to look a little bit nicer. I finished the green by going in with some flat green and actually doing some recess shading at this point. And again, I only need definition in certain parts. I think around the pec armor because I airbrushed that so bright is worth doing and I guess this is in the place of traditional washes where you'd wash the armor all over. My preference is to just go in and you know paint the shadows where I need them and most of the parts I don't need to do this because I've done it with black or you know there's some gold trim so I think doing it at the end is more efficient and you can just really see the parts that need it and also like I said just neaten up those mistakes you will inevitably make. When the painting is finished, I glue some sand on the base. Any of the rock details were base coated with Zandri dust from Citadel. And then I do a heavy wash of Rhinox Hide. And this goes over the Zandri dust rock really nicely. And it also goes over the sand spot on. And you get really nice capillary action in the sand. So it's just super quick. And I kind of like to take advantage of having that natural sand color come through a little bit. Then if you want, you can do some highlights on the rocks with Zandri dust again, just going back in. And it doesn't matter if the wash is kind of messy because you know you can highlight different parts on the rock and cover it up. So you can be pretty, pretty liberal with that wash. Just uh, get it on there, let it dry perfectly, and then neaten it up with these highlights after. The basing for my Eldar is super quick and easy, but I love it. I go for my trusty ground base medium from Reality and Scale, and we'll put the link for that in the description. But basically, I want the brown sand underneath, but I glue this over the top and it just makes it look like a kind of forest. And yeah, I absolutely love it. I've done this for my Sylvaneth army and for my Eldar army. I then stick on some moss pads from Mini Nature and yeah, these are wicked. 
I'd like to put a lot of them on the base, but they actually take a fair bit of time. I like to PVA glue them on and yeah, it just takes a little while, but the basing is so simple. I think it's worth putting a load of these really, really good tufts on and it looks great in the end. And that is the entire process. And looking at the final shots, I'm really happy with the color scheme. I think the choice of greens is really nice for my taste, I like it. And what's key is the black, having more black just makes the green stand out more. So I really, really like painting that kind of undersuit. I did it for my Howling Banshees as well. And I'm really happy with the color of the metallics. I just think, yeah, it works really nicely with the green. I hope you see what I tried to do with my army painting. I like to do very few stages and just do them quite nicely. Maybe it's just one highlight, but I do a quite neat job. You know, the black super simple, the metallics were two steps. I do think you can do things very simply, but take your time with those, you know, few simple steps. And what I like to do is leave miniatures where I could always add additional work if I wanted to. Like I said, with the black, I could definitely highlight that some more. Uh, and the same with the green as well. I could edge highlight everything maybe if I'm left unsatisfied. But to be honest, I think once I get them on the table, I'll probably be really happy and uh, just like the awesome color. I want to finish by looking at my army and yeah, let's see how my elder army's going. I haven't really done an update on them for a little while. It's looking pretty cool. I need to get a, uh, a gaming table to do some nice video shots with. But yeah, you can see where I'm heading with it with the Ulth Way and we're getting through the Aspect Warriors. Super happy with the Dark Reapers, maybe not in games, but I really love the look of those. And uh, yeah, same with the Banshees, actually. They uh, always die, but I love how they look. So that's cool. I think my favorite minis are always going to be my Altark and Farseer, just because I put the most work into those. Uh, and I love the purple for the cloth. But yeah, the army's looking pretty cool. I'm not super happy with the bikes that I've done. So I think I'd like to replace those with the Ranger bikes and I really want some Rangers as well. So yeah, maybe I should do a batch paint of the three bikes and the five Rangers. So that'll probably finish off my infantry for now. And then I really, really want to do some tanks, two Fire Prisms, two Falcons. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you want to see me work some more on my Elder Army. And yeah, I'd love to do some more videos of this in the future. I'm definitely going to do the Avatar as well at some point. And fingers crossed we get Karandras because, yeah, we've had the other Phoenix Lords. My guess is that when Striking Scorpions get released not in the Kill Team box, that hopefully they do Karandras. That's just me hoping. And, uh, yeah, then I definitely want to do a tutorial video for painting Karandras. But at least I know the greens to go for and I'm happy with those, so... Anyway, let me know what you think of this video. I really want to try and make things simple but look awesome and I hope that comes across. And I hope you like the look of my Elder Army so far and definitely want to get some games in with Henry and uh, yeah, show off our cool armies. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments and looking forward to the next one.